Welcome to this video series, where we explore the world of WebDriver.io to help you succeed in your test automation career. Hello, my name is Marco Cruz, and I'm the founder of Automate Now, and I'm excited to team up with Lambda Test to bring you these awesome videos. My background is in computer engineering, and I have over a decade in software testing experience. You can learn more about my company by heading over to AutomateNow.io, and you can also find us on YouTube by searching Automate Now. In this video, we're going to learn how to parameterize our test. Test parameterization means that we're going to run the same test with different sets of data. A good example for this is, say you have a login page, and you want to be able to test a login page with different sets of data. In the first scenario, for instance, you could say that you want to provide a good username, but a bad password. In the second scenario, you can provide no username and a good password. So you get the idea. You want to see how the application reacts with different scenarios. Let's have a look at an example. In the example that I'm going to show you guys, we're going to be using the Lambda Test Playground. You can get to it by going to this URL here. Once you're on there, you can go to My Account and then click on Register. Here we have a form that's going to ask us for some basic information so that we can register for this website. All right. So let's go ahead and fill out some of this information so I can show you guys what we want to do. Okay, I'm going to put in some fake information here for now. Okay. Then some random numbers here. And then for the password, I'm just going to leave it blank. This is where we're going to focus our attention in this fields right here for the password. We want to be doing some password validation to make sure that when the user registers, the password validation is working properly. Now I'm going to click continue now. Notice that we get an error message. It says that this password must be between four and 20 characters long. Now I've entered no password, so I know that the application is behaving properly, right? It's not letting me continue because I haven't entered a password. Now let's go ahead and enter a password, but it's below the minimum requirements. I'm going to put in one, two, three, and also here for the confirmation, one, two, three. If I click continue, again, I will get the error message that's saying that it's not minimum, it's not meeting the minimum requirements. So this is working as expected. I'm going to start by showing you guys this page object here. We're using the page object model and you can refer to our previous video in this series to learn more about that. But essentially what I've done is created a page object for that registration page. Okay. I've called this one here, register.page.js. And this fall, falls under this page objects folder. Now this right here contains all of the getter methods for the different elements on that page, at least the elements that I'm going to be interacting with. Again, here we have the first name, the last name, the email, and so forth, right? So all the fields that I want to uh, fill out, I want to put those here. And then I also have a method here called register. Okay, This requires that we pass in a first name, last name, email, like all of the minimum requirements um, are listed here. Okay, And then once we do that, we can see what's happening here. We're saying first name, that set value, and we're going to enter whatever the user passes in, right? For the first name, same thing for the last name, et cetera. Uh, we also have another method here called open, right? All we're going to do here is to go to that page directly. We're going to access this account slash register. Okay. That's the path for the registration page. And I've also created another method to be able to retrieve the error message that gets shown to the user when they enter the incorrect password or don't meet the minimum requirements for the password. Okay. So this is what this is going to do here. All right. So now we're going to write the actual test that's going to do this. Okay. I've also created another um, folder here called parameterization. Okay. So this is under test. Okay. And inside there we have our spec file and this is called register.spec.js. Okay, this is what it looks like right now. It's just a skeleton. But as you can see, we have a before hook here, before each, which is going to navigate to that registration page, as I mentioned before, right? We're calling register page that open, and that's going to go here. Okay. It calls a super class, which is basically uh, this URL for the Lambda test website. Okay. Or Lambda test playground. All right. Once we are there, we're going to go ahead and do that password validation that we talked about. Now, there's different ways of doing this here. I could write a simple for loop here, create an array of objects that has all of the information um, that I want to try to input into that form. The way that I'm going to show you guys how to do this is by using a JSON file. We're going to put all of our test data that we want to use in the test. We're going to put it in a JSON file, and then we're going to read from that file 
so that the test can execute on it. All right. So let's go ahead and begin by doing that. All right. So let's go ahead and create that JSON file here. I'm going to put it in the same folder that I have this right here, my uh, spec file. So I'm going to right click parameterization and then I'm going to say new file and I'm going to call this one register data dot JSON. All right. So I already have the set of data that I want to use. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that information. I'm going to paste it here. So let's see what we have here. All right. So we have a, an array with three different objects inside of it. Right. The first one says that the first name is going to be test. The last name is going to be one and so on. Notice that for the password, we have nothing. Right. So we're, we, we, we have an empty string. Basically, we're not going to be entering a password in the second scenario. We have a password that has only three characters, one, two, and three. And in the last scenario, we have a password that has one, two, three, four. So that's going to meet the minimum requirements of four, but the confirmation password is going to be incorrect. Notice that for each of these scenarios, we have the expected error message. Okay. In the first scenario, we're going to say that the password must be between, between four and 20 characters long. Obviously we haven't entered a password, so we should see this error message. Same thing for the second scenario. Since we only enter three characters for the password, we should see the same error message. And when we enter the correct amount of characters for the password, but the confirmation message, confirmation password is not the same, then we should see a different error message as listed here. Now, now that we have this information, we're going to create the test so that we can read this data. And each time the test runs, it's going to execute the test with this set of data. And then with this data, and lastly with the, with this data. So the test will run three times and each time it's going to grab the different objects in this array. Now let's go ahead and write the actual test. We're going to go back to our spec file over here, and then we're going to import that file, this JSON file that we just created. That's going to have our test data. So let's go ahead and import that information so we can have it ready for our test. I'm going to say import. We're going to call this test data and then from now we need to provide the path for this file right here. Since this is in the same folder as the test, I can just say dot forward slash and then the name of the file, which is register data dot JSON. We also need to add an assert here. I'm going to say assert and then type JSON. All right. That's all we need to do there. Next, we're going to go down to the test and we're going to write a for loop. This for loop is going to be used to read the different objects from that JSON. Uh, array. All right. So let's go ahead and say here for, and then we're going to say const, let's call it data of test data. Let's go ahead and write the body of our for loop. And here we're going to call that register method. All right. So if we go back here to this page object that we wrote, register that page, we have something called register. Okay. So I'm going to call this method right here, register. And I'm going to pass in all of this information so that we can do the registration. Okay. So let's go back over here and here we're going to say await register page dot register. And then we can pass in the data from the JSON file. And the way we do that is by using data dot, and then we can pass in whatever information we want to pass. So the first thing that we need to pass in is the first name. Okay. So if we go back, Take a look at this JSON file once again. We can see here that we have this first name, last name, email. So those are the things that we're going to be calling in. Okay, we're going to call this first name right here. So we're going to say data dot first name, then comma. We know that we need a last name. All right, so we're going to say data dot last name and so on. Let me go ahead and finish this up. All right, so I've entered all of the information that I need right here. All right, for that method. And then what I want to do is to slow the test down a bit so that I can see what's going on so I can show you guys. So we're going to put a pause here. After we fill out the form, I'm going to say um, browser dot pause. And let's just call for two, two seconds here. Then we're going to make an assertion. Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, Notice that this form here, when we say register, it's actually going to click the continue button, right? So after we click continue, we're going to pause for two seconds, and then we're going to perform the validation of the error message. 
what type of error message is being shown on the screen. We're going to create a constant here. We're going to call it error message is equal to await register page dot get error message. Once we've gotten the error message, we're going to perform the validation. I'm going to say await expect error message dot to equal and we're going to grab from the data. Notice that we have in the data the expected error message right here. So this is called error message. So here we're going to say data dot error message. I think that's what it's called here. Error MSG. Yep. Just like that. Now is a good time for us to do a quick recap on what we have done with this test. Let's begin here at the top. We have said that we have some data called registerdata.json. That JSON file contains the different sets of data that we want to use during test execution. Okay, we'll take a look at that again in a second here. But first thing here that we're going to do is go to the registration page. Okay, we land on the, on the registration page and then we have the actual test. Okay, and this test has a for loop. Okay, this is important. We're doing test parameterization. So we're using a for loop to be able to iterate through different sets of data or different scenarios that we want to test. Okay. So basically we're reading the data and we're going to then go to the registration page right here. When we say register page that register. If we take a look at this method right here, we see that this method requires that we pass in the first name, the last name, the email, the phone number, password, and the confirmation password. It then goes in and fills out all of this information. Okay. Once it fills out all that information, fills out the, the web form, it clicks on the continue button. Okay. And that's all it's doing right here. After we click continue, we're going to pause so that we can see what's going on. This is just for testing purposes. And then we're going to check for an error message. Okay. We're going to check for an error message to make sure that it matches a certain error message that we expect. Now take a look at this register data.json, right? So here we have the three scenarios that we're testing. Okay. In the first scenario, we're going to use this first name, this last name, this email, this phone number, and for the password. Okay. This is the part that we're testing. Notice that we're leaving this empty. Okay. We're not entering a password, nor are we entering a confirmation password. If we do that and click continue on the form, we should see this error message right here. Okay. That's the first scenario. It's basically saying that we need a password that is between four and 20 characters. In the next scenario, we change things up a little bit here, but the important thing here again is the password. Notice that we have entered something this time, but it's not long enough. It's only three characters long. So we should again see a similar error message in that case. In the last scenario, Right. We have now entered the correct amount of characters. We have four characters, but notice that the confirmation password is not the same as the first original password. So we should see a different error message. Right. It's saying that the confirmation does not match. Okay. So this is basically what this test is going to do. Let me take you to the website again. And here we have the web form. So again, we're going to go ahead. Here we're going to say, um, let me go back here one second, All right? So here we have, let's take a look at this one. Let's just do this test one. Okay. So basically it's going to go here and say test, go to last name. It's going to say one, and then it's going to say test one at test.com. It will then go ahead and enter some random number here for the phone number. And then for the password, we're going to be leaving it blank in the first scenario. Okay. No password, no password confirmation. Then it's going to click continue. When it clicks continue, notice that we get an error message. This is the error message that we're going to be validating. We're going to ensure that this error message matches what we expect. In this case, no password was entered. So obviously we're seeing that the password needs to be between four and 20 characters long. Now, if we go back to the test, we're going to be checking here for this error message right here, right? This is the error message that we expected to see. So if we find that error message, then the test will pass. In the second scenario, again, we, we expect the same error message. If we find that error message, the test passes again. Okay. If at any point we don't find the, 
the, pro the appropriate error message, then the test will fail. For example, in this last scenario, we are providing, like we said, the, the correct length, but the wrong confirmation. So we should see this error message right here, not this one over here. The next step here is to execute the test. Now, I've already done that beforehand. I ran the test on the Lambda Test Cloud Platform. We go here to Lambda Test Playground or Lambda Test website. We're going to find, um, once you create your account and everything, you're going to find this automation section right here. So we're going to click on that. And then I'm going to navigate to the last uh, run that I did right here. So this one is from today. I'm going to click on this right here. And we can see the test run. These are all the steps, all the commands that I ran. And here we have the video of the test execution. Let's go ahead and play this. Okay, I'm going to make that make this a little bit uh, larger. And we should see the test running here. And we can see here the test one is being run. Then it's going to click, right? No password is going to click. And then it's going to show this error message. This is the second run. Okay. And we should see the last run right here as well. Okay, there we see the test number three. We have entered the, cor the correct length, but the wrong confirmation. And there we see that right there. Okay, so all of our tests passed because we have found the correct error message every single time. And we can see here, right here, that the test executed. It took 24 seconds to run and our test was successful. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Check out any of the links on the screen to get connected with the Lambda Test community, get certified, and get access to the code that you saw today. See you in the next video.